attendance today. My 8.30 service this morning had five, so, so uh, I'm glad you're more than that. So, and uh, it's Elijah's birthday tomorrow, and he told me to keep it short today, so I'll try to keep it a little shorter for Elijah's birthday. <laughs> want to remind you to sign up for our new Bible study and uh, the Louis Guglio cookbook. And uh, so if you could sign up for that, we need to order the book soon. That will begin on the 10th, January 10th, 2022. Can you believe it? 2022. So. But anyway, I have no other announcements. Does anyone else have announcements this morning? Sandra, do you have any? Well, go ahead, Tom. If you look at the bottom on the inside of your bulletin in celebration, it tells you that we have collected 563 items for the food bank for our reverse advent calendar. And that's
then he'll be rise again, and death and pain will be defeated. This was all according to your plan, dear Father, from the creation of the universe. For that again we shout hallelujah. Be with us in service now, Lord. Help us to focus on how you have been to us, and may we ever be thankful. We pray this in our Savior's name. Amen. Our opening hymn is the first Noel.
reading from 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verses 18 through 20, verse 26. Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. His mother used to make for him a little robe and take it to him each year when she went up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Then Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife and say, May the Lord repay you with children by this woman for the gift that she made to the Lord. And then they would return to their home. Now the boy Samuel continued to grow. years 
everyone had forgotten how high the tower was supposed to be. Now all the people knew at the top of the tower was a chime of Christmas bells. They had hung there ever since the church had been built and were the most beautiful bells in the world. Some thought it was because a great musician had cast them and arranged them in their place. Others said it was because of the great height, which reached up where the air was clearest and purest. However, that might be no one who had ever heard the chimes denied that they were the sweetest in the world. Some described them as sounding like angels far up in the sky. Others as sounding like strange winds singing through the trees. But the fact was that no one had heard them for years and years. There was an old man living not far from the church who said that his mother had spoken of hearing them when she was a little girl. And he was the only one who was sure as much as that. They were Christmas chimes, you see, and were not meant to be played by men or on common days. It was the custom on Christmas Eve for all the people to bring to the church their offerings to the Christ child. And when the greatest and best offering was laid on the altar, there used to come sounding through the music of the choir the Christmas chimes far up in the tower. Some said the wind rang them, others were so high that the angels could set them swinging. But for many years, they had never been heard. It was said that people had been growing less careful of their gifts for the Christ child, and that no offering was brought great enough to deserve the music of the chimes. Every Christmas Eve, the rich people still crowded to the altar, each one trying to bring some better gift than the other, without giving anything that he wanted for himself. And the church was crowded with those who thought that perhaps the wonderful bells might be heard again. But although the service was splendid and the offerings plenty, only the roar of the wind could be heard far up in the stone tower. Now a number of miles from the city in a little country village, where nothing could be seen of the great church, but glimpses of the tower when the weather was fine, lived a boy, a little boy, named Pedro and his little brother. They knew very little about the Christmas chimes, but they had heard of the service in the church on Christmas Eve and had a secret plan which they had often talked over when by themselves to go to see the beautiful celebration. Nobody can guess, little brother, Pedro would say, all the fine things there are to see and hear. And I have even heard it said that the Christ child sometimes comes down to bless the service. What if we could see him? The day before Christmas was bitterly cold that year, with a few lonely snowflakes flying in the air, and a hard white crust was covering the ground. Sure enough, Pedro and little brother were able to slip quietly away early in the afternoon, and although the walking was hard in the frosty air, before nightfall they had trudged so far, hand in hand, that they saw the lights of the big city just ahead of them. Indeed, they were about to enter one of the great gates in the wall that surrounded it when they saw something dark on the snow near their path and stepped aside to look at it. It was a poor woman who had fallen just outside the city, too sick and too tired to get in where she might have found shelter. The soft snow was made of a drift of sort of pillow for her, and she would soon be found sound asleep in the wintry air that no one could ever waken her again. All this Pedro saw in a moment, and he knelt down beside her and tried to rouse her, even tugging at her arm a little, as though he would have tried to carry her away. He turned her face toward him so that he could rub some of the snow on it, and when he, heard, when he had looked at her silently a moment, he stood up again and said, It's no use, little brother. You will have to go on alone. Alone, cried the little brother. And you, and you not see the Christmas festival? No, said Pedro. 
and he could not keep back a bit of a choking sound in his throat. See this poor woman? Her face looks like the Madonna in the chapel window, and she will freeze to death if nobody cares for her. Everyone has gone to the church now, but when you come back, you can bring someone to help her. I will rub her to keep her from freezing and perhaps get her to eat the bun that is left in my pocket. But I cannot bear to leave you and go on alone, said little brother. Both of us need not miss the service, said Pedro, and it better be I than you. You can easily find your way to the church and you must see and hear everything twice, little brother, once for you and once for me. I am sure the Christ child must know how I should love to come with you and worship him. And oh, if you get a little chance, little brother, to slip up to the altar without getting in anyone's way, take this little silver piece of mine and lay it down for my offering when no one is looking. Do not forget where you have left me and forgive me for not going with you. In this way, he hurried little brother off to the city and winked hard to keep back the tears as he heard the crunching footsteps sounding farther and farther away in the twilight. It was pretty hard to lose the music and splendor of the Christmas celebration that he had been planning for so long and spent the time instead in that lonely place in the snow. The great church was a wonderful place that night. Everyone said that it never looked so bright and beautiful before. When the organ played and the thousands of people sang, the walls shook with the sound, and little Pedro, away outside the city wall, felt the earth tremble around him. At the close of the service came the procession with the offerings to be laid on the altar. Rich men and great men marched proudly up to lay down their gifts to the Christ child. Some brought wonderful jewels, some baskets of gold so heavy that they could scarcely carry them down the aisle. A great writer laid down a book that he had been making for years and years, and last of all walked the king of the country, hoping with all the rest to win for himself the chime of the Christmas bells. There went a great murmur through the church as the people saw the king take from his head the royal crown, all set with precious stones and lay it gleaming on the altar as his offering to the Holy God. Surely, everyone said, we shall hear the bells now, for nothing like this has ever happened before. But still, only the cold old wind was heard in the tower, and the people who shook their heads, and some of them said as they had had before, that they never really believed the story of the chimes, and now did they ever rang at all. The procession was over, and the choir began the closing hymn. Suddenly the organ is stopped, playing as though he had been shot, and everyone looked at the old minister, who was standing by the altar, holding up his hand for silence. Not a sound could be heard from anyone in the church. But when all the people strained their ears to listen, there came softly but distinctly, swinging through the air, the sound of chimes in the tower. So far away, and yet so clear the music seemed, so much sweeter were the notes than anything that had been heard before, rising and falling away up there in the sky, that the people in the church sat for a moment as still as though something held each of them by the shoulders. Then they all stood up and stared straight at the altar to see what great gift had awakened the long silent bells. But all that the nearest of them saw was the childish figure of little brother who had crept softly down the aisle when no one was looking and had laid Pedro's little piece of silver on the altar. When the song of angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the king and princes are home, when 
the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among others, to make music in the heart. This is the Christmas story.
one and done. Right, right. She had passed away unexpectedly. Okay. Piper for surgery. And uh, as she's born, she's going to have to spend uh, three days in Pittsburgh. I mean, she's going to have internal radiation, but they also are going to do a biopsy on They found a, um, something hanging off of her liver. Okay. To biopsy that. And then um, Ellie is leaving on Tuesday morning for Mexico. For a mission. She's leaving on Tuesday. And there's four up in the morning. Okay. Thank you, Sandra. All right. Are there others? Go ahead, Fernando. Uh, my mom's sister, Virginia, uh, she had a stroke, brain stroke, and they took it out from the life support, but she still here. And the doctor already told her that it's my work. Okay. And any moment so it's your, it's your aunt Virginia then. That's yes, okay. All right. What's that? That's it. Everybody's staying in the Right, right, right. So they are anticipating her to pass then. All right. And then,
what's wrong with him? Dana's father-in-law. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this new morning and this beautiful day. Father, as we end this year and as we enter the next, again, we pray for our world, we pray for our country, that our nation's hearts I turn toward you this coming year. Lord, we pray for each person that we mentioned today, people's families, individuals. We, we give praise for the joys of being with others during Christmas Day. And we give praise for new birth Pray that this year as well that you would restore unto us the joy of our salvation. Lord, each person on this list needs you in some way, whether for healing, whether for spiritual guidance, whether for a blessing on a trip, whether for presence in the transition for their family of someone who is passed. We lift these up to you this day, knowing that you are a God that cares. For you sent your Son into the world for all about caring. So bless these individuals, Lord. Help them. And make us a new people for you this coming year. We pray all of this in your son's name, the babe of Bethlehem, who taught us to pray this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us bring now our tithes and offerings to the Lord.